Hello and welcome to our fifth webinar in the series of the informative webinars that the Calix team has put together for you. Today, you will see me in discussion with a member of our engineering team, Shane Retke, talking about the dosing unit solutions um, when dosing chemicals and in particular Actimag for wastewater treatment. So without further ado, uh, let me introduce you to Shane. Hi, Shane. Hi, Sam. Thank you for having me today. It's good to be here. No, thank you for your time today. Thank you for joining us. Now, before we dive, dive deep into this discussion, can you tell me and our, uh, our um, audience here today a bit about yourself, your experience, your background? Okay, Sam, thank you. Um, originally, I'm from the far south coast of New South Wales. I moved to Sydney and studied at University of New South Wales with a Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, since then, I, I joined Calix. I've been with Calix for uh, about five years now, so it's been a while. And um, I, in, in, that, in that five years with Calix, I've been very involved with the wastewater industry and I've worked across Australia, New Zealand and, and the USA. Uh, I'm now posted in Brisbane, work as uh, an operations and sales engineer and, and um, worked in both like in, in my time with Calix I've worked in both production and application of Actimag uh, uh, involved in both the design stages of dosing systems and and the processes of producing Actimag but also have been involved in the hands-on side of things in applying the Actimag so that pretty much sums up my background Great, thank you, Shane. Um, you know, for for um, the benefit of those who are joining us here for the first time, we've spoken about Actimag and its various applications in the wastewater treatment in the earlier webinars, which, by the way, you can find on our website. Um, so, coming back to you, Shane, your team has been instrumental in designing the solutions to apply um, our product Actimag. Now, can you walk us through? what those solutions are. Okay, I will, I will. But before I get into that, Sam, I might just sort of think, so the people listening, looking for these solutions, we, I think we have two types of listeners today. We're going to have the people listening who, I guess, haven't used Actimag before and they're interested in, in potentially using it. Maybe they have problems in their wastewater network. They're wondering, okay, how do I use it? How do I apply it? Uh, and then and then the other listener we're going to have is going to be the people out there who might already be using uh, maybe a commodity grade magnesium hydroxide dosing system. So they have something in place, but maybe they're having issues with their system and, and they don't know why or, or they don't know how to fix it, basically. So we'll run through basically, I think, a solution for for both those people who might be listening. Um, and it, what we're looking for as a solution, well, well, what I think the, the listeners are looking for, they're looking for something basically that's going to work all the time and not break down. Like yeah. it is wastewater, it's it's constantly flowing and and it, you constantly need to be providing a, uh, a, a solution as it's ongoing. You, you, you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, we obviously have a um, bit of a variety in the listeners who have joined us here today. So um, that's great. Now, can you tell me about, I know your team has invested um, a lot of time in, in, in you know, designing and building the right kind of dosing systems that complement um, MHL dosing. Can you um, share with us some insights into those dosing systems and perhaps touch on why they are important in the first place. So as I previously stated, the customer's looking for a solution that's incredibly reliable. Uh, they want something that's like, has requires minimal operation and minimal maintenance while also being affordable. Now, what Calix produces or what Calix has designed and built with their dosing system is we've made the system basically as automated as possible. Um, I mean, obviously, you still need to deliver product and top it up, but between deliveries, there's basically no operation required. Uh, the system requires sort of maintenance checks every every six 
months. And, uh, and because of that, we have, it, it really requires minimal man hours to manage our dosing systems now, which is great. Uh, this, to, to do this, to run so automated, the systems come, can come with like full SCADA enabled systems. So they can be uh, integrated into any existing system a, uh, a council or a customer might have to run their existing network. So it can be run as part of that. Uh, okay. Can you can you show us some designs um, that you, you guys have put together? Um, because I know you've touched on this on the dosing solutions. It it will help if we can um, share some of the photos. If you can if you can talk through some of the designs that we have. Sure thing, Sam. Uh, but so basically at Calix, uh, we have a full engineering team, so we can design and custom build any any system for to provide any solution to our customers. But based on uh, a common request in, in what customers are after, we've, we've brought out a range of four, of four different dosing system designs that are, are pretty commonly used in, in, in treating wastewater. So the four systems we've built, we've got the, the Flex. So the Flex, comes in a 1500 liter and 2000 liter capacity. Uh, we offer it and, and it gets its name flex in its flexibility in, in I guess the, uh, the options of how it can be. So it can come basically uh, with no bund at all, no, no secondary containment for maybe installing it inside a uh, an, an area where you're not concerned about spills, but at the same time, you could also have it fully contained. So you could put it out in, in a public street somewhere and, and have the, uh, the peace of mind that you know you're not gonna have a spill leak out everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. At the same time, I mean, if it's, if it's gonna be stored indoors, you can get it just as a naked system, which will save you on cost. So it's literally just gonna be the frame and tank and pumps and it'll all be on display. Or if you are looking to put something out in public where aesthetics are important, you can get it. You can get it fully clad in uh, in color bond steel, for instance. Uh, now, you can also get it clad in thermal insulation if you are going to have it in in let's say out in the desert, somewhere hot, somewhere where you need to protect it from the heat, or or or, or it could be protecting it from the cold if you are putting it somewhere where you are dealing with freezing temperatures. Uh, but that sort of sums up the bulk of the, the main differences in the flex. The next system we have is the cube. Now, the cube gets its name because it's, it's built within a, a shipping container. So it can be either in a 10-foot a container or a 20-foot container. We go with the bigger container to, to fit a larger volume. So your 10-foot containers, we can fit a maximum of 2,000 litres and the the 20 foot container we can fit up to 4000 liters in storage capacity uh now the beauty of the container is it's it's uh i mean it's securely it's very safe i mean it's pretty pretty difficult to break into a shipping container they're very vandal proof uh but they're also very waterproof which is good and they're they're relatively easy to pick up and place and move around the next system we have is the max now the max is similar to the cube. It's also built uh, based around a shipping container. So all of the valuable equipment, the pumps, the the control panel, any of the sensors, the majority of that is all within the container. But it gets its name the max because it can store the basically the max the maximum amount of of uh, of product, and that's not limited really at all because the tank is situated outside the container. So you can connect up um, as large a tank as you like and as many tanks as you like. And then the fourth system is the skid. So the skid was developed due to the demand of the, um, of the international market, basically. What we found was it was, it was really difficult to, to build a standardized system like the Flex for the international market because every country has different dimension tanks and, and and different volumes. So it was, there was nothing uniform. So what we went with is we basically took all the components 
that are within a flex that run a flex control it and we've, we've packaged that all onto a skid and then you simply hook it up to any tank size you'd like so the skid offers um, a lot of flexibility in, in how it can be used uh, and where it can be used so that sums up the four systems that are currently on the market we do have a fifth system coming out later this year it's just gone into uh, the field trial phase so we, we have started testing it out in the field but it's basically we'll We've decided, well, we've been developing this system due to the large demand of requests to, to be able to treat wastewater with ActiMag, but uh, in areas where you, you don't require so much product. So you're basically your, your wastewater networks where you've got low flow and, and probably higher retention times. So you are, are still getting the odor, but with a, a minimal amount of wastewater flow. So to meet that demand, we've been developing developing a system. So we're, we're calling it the Mini, and it's it's basically built around a 200 liter drum. So it's it it has the same functions as a like our 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 bigger systems. Like it has a dosing pump. It recirculates the product to ensure it stays in in uh, in good stability. It provides an affordable solution for customers that maybe can't afford to put in those bigger systems or who maybe just don't need that much volume. Great, great. It's good to know that, uh, you know, there's a new solution coming this year. Looking forward to it. Now, um, thanks, Shane. You've touched on the different sizes and the different types of standard solutions available. Tell me a bit about the installation side of things. Um, how do you install these units? So whether it's the mini, the, the baby system we have, or the max, they're all relatively straightforward to install. Uh, most installs should only take a couple hours, really. So you're looking to connect up a few hose lines, so you know water supply, um, the dosing line to the well, and, and your power supply. Uh, we've tried to make it as, as simple as possible, so um, making it easy easier for the customer. Now, Calix provides uh, a full installation service. If, if the customer wants peace of mind, it doesn't have to worry about doing it. Or we can provide all the, all the necessary documentation, such as installation guidelines and the manuals for the systems, so that if they choose to do it themselves, they can do it and they, they, they can follow a procedure that's telling them the right way to do it. Well, it's good to know that that sort of engineering support is available. Do all our dosing units come with some sort of data monitoring system like a Modbus or a PLC? Because there is an increasing awareness in our customer base about, you know, having a data monitoring 24-7 and in a real time. So do all our dosing systems have that ability? So we basically build the, the smarts for the system to suit what the customer wants now. And, and for the most part, customers are looking for that data monitoring, as you mentioned. They want to have eyes on their system. They want to they want to see, you know, what is the tank level at? How many days is it till we need to fill it up? Uh, what speed is it dosing at? Um, how, like, can we increase the dose rate or reduce it depending on their needs? Not only managing the dosing system and, and looking after that, but customers want to also monitor the the problem from the source as well. So in the example of, of odour, uh, what is the H2S? What was it before we started dosing? And, uh, and what is it now as we're dosing? Like, can we get a live feedback? Can we see uh, the impact while it's occurring of the chemical to reduce the odor? And then can we control the rate we're dosing to suit to suit what's required to manage the, the odor? Um, Shane, I'm sure we didn't get to these solutions and the designs overnight, right? So I'd like to understand how did we get here? And most importantly, why did we set up an engineering team to design the dosing units that wonderfully uh, complement the ActiMag dosing? 
Okay, so how did we get here? I think we've got to step back quite a way. So I think it was so in 2013 was when we first commissioned the 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 cow signer that produces the high surface area magnesium oxide. So this, this was the the first co commercial scale cow signer that could produce this high surface area product. So that, so that was in 2013 and we brought our I mean, we began dosing at the start of 2014. So we were in there as quick as we could, basically. And we got in the market because basically, basically there was just a huge monopoly occurring. There was only one major supplier of magnesium hydroxide. And, and because there was only one supplier and a lack of competition, there was basically no innovation occurring in, in the sector or in the industry of, of, of magnesium hydroxide so and that basically goes against all the principles of calyx because we want we're extremely innovative so we basically came in and we shook up the 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 competition basically we we created competition so uh we we came in with our product uh with all the the, the benefits that come with a high service area but what we saw was because of the lack of innovation there hadn't the, the dosing systems that that councils had that were out in the market weren't that great. Uh, we would constantly hear from customers who were having difficulties, they were having blockages, they were having uh, drop out of material in their storage tanks. The, there was a long list of issues that, that were occurring and occurring far too frequently. So that was basically when, oh, well, like how Calyx works is we, we, we basically want to solve problems. We want to provide solutions for our customers. So even though we want to supply a product, like we want to supply our um, our ActiMag, we, we want to provide a whole solution. So that's when we basically got our engineers and we started uh, looking at ways to improve these dosing systems. And that's basically what, what led to us like putting a whole team towards building and designing our own dosing systems. Now, and we've been flat out at that for the past uh, six or seven years now. And and that's what's led us to here basically where we've got like a really good dosing system that's very reliable with minimal break, like with basically minimal work required as far as operation and maintenance. And, uh, and we're constantly looking to make it as cheap as possible. So that's where we are now. So Shane, what I'm, um, what I understand is, and, and I know um, that we, A, mine our own raw material, B, manufacture our own finished product, which is ActiMag, and C, build our own dosing systems. So really, um, I think it's apt to say that we are an end-to-end -end solution provider. Correct. <clears throat> That's right, Sam. So we, we, we're not looking just to be a product supplier and we're not looking just to provide dosing units. We want to provide a total solution. We want to be the total package because we want to make it as simple as possible for the, the, the customer. Um, so, and I, and I know this, this is very relevant in today's time as well, when um, with the situation that we find ourselves in um, because of the whole COVID-19 and its impact on the businesses, I know that our customers are looking for a very simple, um, you know, supply chain equation where they're not involved with 10 different people because, you know, um, that just adds on to the complexity of the whole equation. So I'm glad that we could establish today that, you know, with our own minds and with our own um, finished product, with our own raw material, with our own brains behind designing and, and, and building these um, wonderful dosing units, we are definitely positioned as, you know, an end-to-end -end solution provider. So off to our comment section to see if we have any questions and uh, we'll, we'll take them on one by one. Thank you. So let's take a note of the questions which is which have come through in the comment section, Shane. Um, these chemical dosing units look fantastic. Is Calyx able to do everything from delivery and maintenance of these units? Uh, so yes, 
more or less. Uh, we have a range of different size tankers to cater to uh, all the different systems we have out and, uh, and, and depending on the distance away as well. Uh, with every delivery we do, uh, we have trained operators who will be out there and they will look over the system and make sure uh, different things that need to be maintained are still are still up like within their they're still up to scratch and they're still they're still running fine if there are any issues they will note them and we will we will act on those those issues uh, uh, it is also worth mentioning for people who are listening who maybe are uh, really remote or a long way away and they're thinking oh these guys wouldn't deliver it to us like because we have such a stable product like i mean we are shipping it all the way from australia to the us currently with a three month lead time where this product isn't being mixed and it's still usable so if you are really remote and you are thinking that uh this isn't for me uh get in touch because we may be able to provide a solution for you also mm -hmm. and um the next question is shane if i have an existing dosing unit that we stopped using a few years ago is Calix able to assist with getting it working again? We are constantly doing this. We're always trying to help customers uh, upgrade their system and to make it work more reliably. So yes, like take some pictures, send them in. Uh, I mean, we'll come and do an, uh, a site inspection and look at it and uh, and work with our customers to to improve their system and make it run more reliably. Great. Thanks, Shane. Uh, there's no more questions in the comment box, but I would like to encourage our listeners to reach out to us. You can go on our website and send your inquiries through, and uh, one of us will be able to get in touch and work through your um, inquiries with you. And uh, before we sign off for today, I'd like to remind everyone there is another webinar coming up soon on Thursday next week, same time, 10 o'clock in the morning. It will be about the impact Actimag has had in the winery industry. So odor is something that um, seller that that can greatly impact seller door sales, and we don't want that. So how has Actimag helped our our um, our customers within the winery region to make sure that the wastewater systems are maintained perfectly? We'll talk about that, and uh, uh, myself, Ralph, and Michael will be involved in that discussion. So tune in at ten o'clock, um, same time on Thursday um, for that webinar. Thank you. Calix was founded in 2005 by myself and a Queenslander named Colin Hawley. He had a great idea for a new type of kiln or furnace. As Connor and I developed the idea, it became apparent that the technology had the potential to be applied to many industries and could help address some of the world's most pressing problems. We raised some money, did some small scale testing and gave some great results, encouraged us to build a commercial scale facility at Bacchus Marsh in Victoria. The calyx flash calciner, or CFC process, involves grinding minerals or other feedstocks to between 100 and 1,000th of a millimetre in size, then flash heating them in an externally heated reactor in a very short time, up to about 950 degrees centigrade. As trapped gases in the material bubble out through the particles, they create highly porous structures. These particles are then cooled very quickly leaving a very porous, honeycomb-like structure. New materials produced by the CFC are proven to have similar reactive properties to nanoparticles without the safety concerns and high costs, but with all the benefits that nanotechnology is developing into numerous products, applications and markets. I joined Calix in 2013 because I could sense the huge potential of this technology. Uh, it's a platform technology that has two sides, production of nanoactive materials on the one hand, and the potential to be applied in CO2 capture on the other. Our first commercial product was released in 2013 for wastewater treatment, followed closely by two more products in 2014, one for infrastructure protection and a specialty chemical additive. All these products are now in export. In addition to our commercial products, we also have some pre-commercial products already in paid trials in Asia and Europe that look really exciting. One's a water conditioner to help with uh, yields and environmental problems in aquaculture. And the others are non-toxic, environmentally friendly, 
broad spectrum crop protection product. We also have a rich research and development pipeline with some really exciting developments in advanced batteries as well as CO2 capture for the lime and cement industries. Additionally, if the materials have trapped CO2, the technology can separate that CO2 directly for no additional energy penalty. For example, limestone by weight is approximately 50% CO2, which is released as a gas when making lime, and is therefore why the cement and lime industries are very CO2 intensive. Application of the technology in CO2 mitigation is thus of interest to those industries. And we're